welcome back to the model works to update number two on the second part of the wild willy boys tribute bill the dodge charger funny car we are going to do a uh, update on the body and paint work that uh, we have completed it's been painted it's been cleared it has been rubbed out and it's ready to, uh, to take a look at, and we'll, without further ado, we'll take a look at it. Now, in this light, it looks uh, extremely yellowish, uh, kind of orangish yellow, but it's not. It, it, this fluorescent light makes it look that way. Let me come up a little close to you, and you can see kind of out of the light. Uh, I hate those fluorescent lights. They're just terrible for giving an accurate depiction of color. There, there you can see that's pretty much what it looks like there. Um, that is about five coats of paint. And I'll go over what we did uh, color-wise in just a second. Probably three coats of clear now across the front is AK interactive I believe that is gun metal and the same across the back of the tail piece there we mat we masked that off um, but anyway let me get into it here right quick as I said this is uh, actually this is testers gloss tangerine enamel uh, this is 11, number 1126. This is cut 2 to 1 uh, with the 1117 light ivory uh, testers enamel. And I did that just to, uh, to knock that. I don't know if you can tell it, but it's extremely, it's a bright orange. Uh, actually too bright for... For an accurate depiction of the original. Now there were a couple of incarnations of this car. One was actually almost a yellow. As a matter of fact, the instructions, the call out for the body calls for a yellow paint. I'm uh, not really sure why they called for that, but uh, there is a version of this car. I think it was uh, I believe it was the earlier version, I could be wrong, of the car that was really a yellowish looking car. It was yellow, almost yellow. Uh, not a bright yellow, but a kind of a light, kind of an orangey yellow. And it, um, it really was an ugly color. I didn't like it at all. And it was not used, uh, he, didn't, he didn't use that car very much. It was, 90% of the uh, reference photos that I have of it are <coughs> in this color here. So that's the one we went with. We had to, uh, body work wise, if you know anything about funny cars, you know that the funny car bodies are all one piece. They are, you know, the bodies are were extended and then they were dipped. Uh, they were fiberglass shells. Uh, bumper work and the uh, fender, I mean, uh, not fenders, the bumper and the spoilers and the headlights, and you know, this is all, there's no headlights on the front. This is all body work. In front of this car, it's flat. There's no dips, I mean, it, it, as far as uh, as all this goes, it, it sprayed in and it's not, there's no, you know, there's no headlights or anything in there. That's just all artwork. Same with the rear. Same with the rear tail panel. If I can, there we go. Uh, there's no tail lights in a funny car. They're all, you know, they're all painted. So uh, the car came in three pieces. Uh, the body, at, at least, the, you had the uh, the body itself, and then you had the front panel, which included the chin spoiler, and then the rear panel, which included the wing across the, the back there. And so what I did was I glued and mounted those two pieces. And then I came back in with, uh, I don't, you know, I loaded the seam up with the testers, I mean, excuse me, with Tamiya 
the extra thin cement, uh, let it sit. So both surfaces good, let it sit. Uh, you know, and the old trick of uh, squeezing out the, get, letting the, the plastic get gooey and then let it squeeze out and then let it sit and dry. Sanded that out and then I actually went back in with sprue glue uh, to eliminate where the uh, remaining seam was visible and primered uh, the body and you can't, you know, it's all one piece, you can't see any any seams where the tail piece or the, the front uh, the front bumper, I mean the front uh, panel goes in or the rear either one so tried to make it as accurate accurate as we could uh, five about five coats of the paint so probably three coats of the testers gloss enamel clear the top coat uh, rub that out and uh, that's pretty much it now what I did was after prior after I painted and prior to clear coating I came in after the paint had set about uh, a week and masked off uh, this front uh, area up here where this tail, this nose piece was, or is, and same way with the rear, and uh, sprayed the uh, AK Interactive. I believe, as I said, I believe this is gun metal that I shot on there. Uh, same way on the tail piece, masked off, and then airbrushed uh, the AK Interactive. And then after that, set up uh, probably a day. I shot the uh, tester's uh, gloss top coat and then it set another probably uh, five, six days, something like that. And then we uh, cut and buffed it out from 3200 to 12,000 grit. It had a little trash in it in places. Uh, it's hard in my house to avoid dog hair because I have some little ankle biters that reside with me. so. Uh, inevitably there is going to be some dog hair or something get in the in the paint or the clear but we got it all out and it come out uh, come out rather nice I mean I'm pleased with it uh, these were not uh, show car finishes on these cars as you know so pretty pleased with the way that turned out all right, I guess that's pretty much it. Just wanted to do a quick, give you a heads up where we're at. Now we, the, the body, uh, the, excuse me, the chassis and engines and chassis, we've got everything pretty much together. Now what I'm going to do is I, I'm d debating on how much fuel line plumbing I'm going to be able to do because, uh, let me go back to this, where, let me pull, let's see if I can, here we go, give you a two-piece look here. I'm going to, if I can get away with it, we're going to run just a, uh, we're going to run a fuel line from here to the fuel pump, which, uh, comes out right over here on this side, at least the inlet side does. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that, and then I've got a I've got a fuel regulator that I made. It's going to mount right here, and we're going to do a return line back to the tank, or back to the back to the fuel pump, and then back to the tank. If we can get away with how we route our fuel plumbing here, we're, we're going to do that. But the caveat to wiring and plumbing fuel funny cars is that if you plan to mount the car body down or display it, I don't should say mount, if you plan to display it with the body down, this re this forward bulkhead right here that mounts in the body about right in there, about right there, this is what, this is where the, the, the body sits on the frame. This is what this is the where the body meets the frame. It sits on this bulkhead, and that comes out, and it sits right, that bulkhead sits right across here. 
So any fuel line plumbing that you do, you either have to take it and drape it way down, or you have to, which I've done it before myself, is notch out, uh, cut you a notch or notches in this bulkhead. Now, that also will kind of knock out a nose high stance on the car. Now, if you've ever built a Rebel Funny car, you know that most of them sit nose high and that will alleviate that problem most of the time is by notching the bulkhead and if I can get away with it we're going to do that just a simple you know uh, from the tank to the pump from the pump to the regulator and then return line back I'm not going to go all hog wild uh, because also the fuel regulator that I plan to put right here all this comes through this cutout uh, on the car where the engine comes through and that regulator is going to be right up against this forward piece, this piece here and it may interfere with it if it does then I may have to either resize it uh, depending on the, and you also have to account for the windshield will be about right here so you don't have a lot of room right there uh, we may not be able to may not be able to do it it's have to we'll just have to see each funny car is a little bit different but we're going to try that and uh it's, it actually doesn't make a lot of sense and I, I i actually get on myself every time i do these funny cars is you know why do you want to do go through all that and then drop the body down and it sits you know until somebody looks at it and comes in you know no nobody comes in the house and says can you raise that body up and let me look at the inside of the car? So, uh, you know, just, I guess just to, to be accurate or just to give it some detail, I, I do that. But anyway, now the other thing is that uh, rear axle mounting on these cars determines, of course, how your, your wheel sits in the, in, the, uh, in the wheel wells. Now, these are notorious also for sitting too low in the wheel well and leaving either a gap between the top of the tire and the wheel well which is not accurate or it's you know it, it's still too it sits too low well, it sits too low in the wheel well not too low on the car uh, you, you can't really tell it but if you can see just kind of on this picture here uh, these cars sit pretty much uh, with the wheel up in the up in the wheel well to where the uh, either the white letter, uh, white lettering on the tires are, or at least halfway down on the on the sidewall of the tire, uh, you can kind of see it there. He's in a full spin there, but in order to alleviate it sitting high up in the or low up in the fender well, what you do is you cut. Um, if you're not familiar with these cars, these axle mounting points where this axle fits in, if you cut, and it's very simple to do, you just take your, your saw and you cut these mounting points on both sides off, and you raise that mounting point as far up on the back of the chassis as it will go. And it will, it will raise it up quite a bit. Now, where you have to be careful is interference with the wheelie bars i have had them interfere so much that i had to actually break one of the wheelie bar rails and re-glue it below uh where it would fit but anyways it generally it, it's not an issue and it what that does is it brings the axle further up which in turn raises the uh rear wheel up into the fender wheel higher and it sits and doesn't look as uh, uh doesn't look goofy with the gap in between so i did that as well and like i said i've got uh, my chassis is sitting over there with uh, a couple of these suspension parts that uh, a couple of these mounting points were real small uh no radius rods yeah right here uh, very small little pin that goes is on the end of this radius rod wasn't much mounting surface for it or at least wasn't much pin for it to go into the mounting point here so I've got a couple of paint bottles uh, 
pushed against there while we're letting the, uh, the CA glue hold up on it. So, and I'll show you the either it, it'll either show up in the final reveal or I'll do one more one more update on the uh, on the build with the chat just the chassis and the engine. But everything the engine's all in, everything's ready except for. Uh, doing my fuel line plumbing and I'm going to put the inner tin work in and get a kind of get an idea of how how much room we'll have to play with up in here on the top and then of course right here so that's where we're at we're ready to do hopefully by the end of the week or first of next week we'll be done and uh, ready to uh, ready to uh, Put the decals on it and get it revealed. Take care of one of them. May God bless you and your family. Don't take any crap from anyone. We'll see you soon.